Let's take a look at direct variation. Direct variation is a special type of linear equation that is in the form y equals kx. And we call that k the constant of variation. So we just have that multiplication going on there. So one of the first things that we can do is identify a direct variation equation. So it should be in this form, or we should be able to write it in this form. So let's take a look at these. This first one, I think sure enough, that looks uh, just like this. And in this case, the k is 3. Okay, So we can identify the constant of variation as being 3. All right, how about this one? Hmm. Well, it's got the multiplication piece, but then we're also subtracting. So this is not a direct variation, okay, because of that subtraction right there. Now, this one uh, looks kind of, sort of. There's one thing on each side, but it's not a y by itself. Can we get the y by itself? Well, sure enough, we could divide by 3 on both sides, and we end up with y equals hey, another y equals 3x. That looks like that. We already said that that one was an example of a direct variation. So the key is that we've just got something multiplied by the x. Could be a fraction, might be a whole number, any integer. And we can solve it for y and write it in this form. Now, sometimes we might be asked to identify a direct variation situation. And one way to do that, if we take our general direct variation equation right there, and we solve it for k, watch what happens. So I have that. In order to solve it for k, what I would do is simply divide by x, divide by x, and I end up with k equals y over x. So. If I find that ratio right there of y divided by x, and it's consistent throughout the values that we're given, then it's an example of a direct variation. So in this one right down here, if I figure out the y over x, we can see if it is. So 24 over 6, that's the y over x for this first one. 24 over 6, which would simplify to just 4. Then this one, it would be 40 over 10, which would simplify to just 4. And then we've got 100 over 25, which would also simplify to just 4. So because, remember that's my k, it's the same all throughout, this is an example of a direct variation. Okay, and we could write that then, since we know what k is, we can write our equation to represent this situation as y equals k is 4, because remember we found that y divided by x, 4x. And I could put each of these x values in and get out the y. So if I put in 6, 6 times 4 is 24, sure enough. Okay, now. Another type of problem that you might be faced with in terms of direct variation is something like these two right over here. It says, suppose y varies directly as x. Okay, if you see that, that's the, the hint that says, hey, we're going to be using this thing right here, y equals kx. All right, now, there's two ways to approach this. One, we could use the k equals y over x but in some ways, that's more to remember. So what I often do is just fill in what I know. Now, let's see what we know. We've got a y equals 16, then we've got a x equals 8, and then we've got another x equals 16 here. Holy cow. How am I supposed to know what I'm using? Well, what I want to do is take the x and y that go together. So it says y equals 16, when x equals 8. So that's basically an ordered pair. That ordered pair is 8, 16. Okay, so right here we have y and x, and I don't know k. k is what I want to find out. So I'm going to fill in that for x and y. So again, my y is 16, so it's going to be 16 equals k I don't know yet, that's what I want to find, and x is 8. 
So 16 equals k times 8. I can solve that for k. So divide by 8, divide by 8. 16 divided by 8 is 2. So k equals 2. Now what I'm going to do is take that k and plug it back in here. So at this point I have y equals 2x. Okay, so I put the 2 in for k. Now, it says find y when x equals 16. So what I'm going to do now is take that x value, plug it in here, and get the y that goes with it. It says find y. So here we go. Let's find it. We put in the 16 for the x, so 2 times 16. And we end up with y equals 2 times 16 is 32. Okay, so 32 is the y that goes with the x when x equals 16. All right, let's look at another example, kind of similar to the situation in the previous one. All right, this one. Again, it starts out, it says, suppose y varies directly as x. Hint, hint, this is what we want. So then we look and find that ordered pair that we're given. It says y equals 16 when x equals, or y equals, holy cow, 21 when x equals 3. Okay, so remember, we could think of that as an ordered pair. It is an ordered pair. 3, 21. Then what I'm going to do is go ahead and plug those things in to my direct variation equation. Okay, so y is 21 equals k times 3. Want to solve for k, so divide by 3, divide by 3. Ooh, that's an ugly 3. There we go. 7 equals k. Okay, so now I know what k is. Plug just the k back in to start with. That's going to be my direct variation equation. y equals 7x. Then it says find x when y is 42. Ooh, a little tricky here. Okay, we can find either one. In this case, we're going to plug the y in. So I'm going to go ahead and put in that value for y, 42, equals 7 times x. And then I can solve that for x, divide by 7, divide by 7. I end up with 6 equals x. So when y is 42, x is equal to 6. Now, a couple other things in terms of, of direct variation. All direct variation equations, if we are asked to graph them, will go through the origin. Let's think about this for a second. In this form, if I put in 0 for x, okay, that would be the x-coordinate at the origin, anything times 0, doesn't matter what the k is, is going to be 0 coming out. So every direct variation equation is going to go through 0, 0. It's going to go through the origin. Then to graph these direct variation, well, I know I've got that one. Then pick another x value, plug it in. And in this case, if we were asked to graph either of these, well, we were given ordered pairs to start with, and we actually found another one. Once we figured out this x, that x and y constitutes another ordered pair. So we actually have three ordered pairs. If we were asked to graph it, we could do that. So, direct variation. In this form right here, y equals kx, it's just using this constant of variation right there. That is the k, and it's also the slope. You're going to see, uh, typically when you work with direct variation, next up you're going to work with slope intercept form, and the k is going to be the same thing as the m, which is the slope. So be on the lookout for that. Remember, it's got to be in that form. If it's a direct variation, we should be able to write it like that. So this is not. Also, if we're given some values, some ordered pairs, to determine if it is a direct variation, we need to have that y over x has to be constant. If that's the case, sure enough, it is a direct variation. We can, given an x and a y, solve to get k and then find one of the two that might be missing given either the x or the y. Hope this video is helpful. Hey, keep working hard on your math. You can do it.